solve large intractable problems. It's a new venture altogether. Your brain is a wild horse there. Because remember, writing is not a team sport. You are not selling horse carriages when there are cars. I want to be known only as a trusted advisor. More like a tourist. Play to Potential Podcast. The other distinction I wanted to talk about, uh, Raku, was the one you bring up between doing and being. Hmm. And you use a phrase which uh, really stayed with me. You speak about being as a regenerative process, something that heals and nurtures. Hmm. Can you speak about this and how that manifests? Yes. Uh, See, I was talking to you about the state of Shantam. Hmm. That's available to all of us. Hmm. When we sleep, deep sleep, we actually get into the state of Shantam, except that we're not aware of it. Yeah, that is when, even biologically, that's when your regeneration takes place, mm. right? That's when healing takes place. Your brain gets reordered and all of this kind of thing happens in deep sleep, right? That is when you get in touch with your being mm. without any external pull or push or any disturbance, right? So in the Gita, when they talk, Finally, na, about sannyasa yogam and then Arjuna goes into battle. He is in this state of shantam. He is in the state of quietude inside while being prepared for battle. Right? So he is not depleting his energies. If I am in the doing mode, I am using my energies and then I have to come back to be replenished. Mm. But if I can be anchored in the being, in the quietness, while I'm acting. I don't get depleted. Right? I can maintain intensity for a long period of time. Mm. Yeah, I can stay in dhyana for three hours, like it is recommended. Mm. Yeah, and I'm sure if a leader can really be in dhyana on his most interesting and difficult problems, he will get insights from an intelligence much bigger than himself. And what, how does one get there, Raghu, uh, to, to sort of, to ensure that uh, you're operating from a state of being? See, the, you, you have to look at the Mahabharata as a text of yoga. Mm. In fact, the first text that discusses ideas of Sankhya and yoga and all that is the Mahabharata. And between stories, between many things, na, mm. there are lots of key ideas of yoga that are discussed. Hmm. Okay, in the last discussion between uh, Bhishma and Yudhishthira, a lot of ideas of yoga and all that are discussed. The practice of yoga is the practice of how do you get a mind which is normally external, normally depleting itself, to quieten itself and become capable of dhyana. That's the, that's the key aspect of yoga, right? I think anybody who wants to seriously look at business, use of resources of the world, yeah, seriously look at science, has to understand this mind. He has to develop this mind, which means he has to practice some form of yoga and come to this mind, which is capable of this kind of insightful looking at a problem. Yeah, otherwise it will become very stressful. Mm. Yeah, because why do you need a leader? You need a leader to help you take decisions in times which are difficult, which are anxiety provoking. Otherwise every manager will take his decision. No, if it's a, that's what happens mostly. Mm. It's only in crisis that you need leadership. At this point of time, if you don't have a person who can absorb that anxiety and be in Shantam, be in quietitude and have a mind that can really look at everything and stay in focus, you'll get jerky answers. Mm. A related thought, uh, Raghu. Even Chanakya says this, um, by the way, not just me saying it. <laughs> <laughs> as, I was, as I was reflecting on this doing versus being, I was wondering, is there, a, is there an insight here around the kinds of choices people make so that you end up 
in situations where there's resonance between what you're doing and who you're being. Do you, is there is there, there is. is there something there is. in that space? That's I think there is. See, um, when you choose to you know engage in business and things like that, na, uh, I've seen a, a, a lot of people for whom their business is their conviction. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there is no internal dissonance mm. between the choices they make in business and the choices that are made as individuals mm. as to what is honorable to do. Right? This internal coherence brings a lot of of things with it, na. Mm. It brings the ability to be calm, it brings the ability to be clear, na, whether you have one battle one or not, you know that you're doing the right thing. Mm. Yeah. so these kinds of of internal coherence is what leads to being and doing being in harmony mm. when this internal coherence is not there you do i'm sure because i've talked to many of these leaders they experience internal dissonance mm. and they will tell you soon or later you know what i'm doing this i'm compelled to do this my heart is somewhere else so when i talk to many senior leaders na i find this you know one set of leaders for whom what they're doing comes from conviction the business they're in what they're doing comes from conviction mm. they can deal with failures they can deal with stress with a much greater degree of internal anchorage and internal coherence than people who don't feel this so this is being and doing in harmony whereas where a person's internal conviction is not very strong they're doing it for the money or they're doing it for something else or mm. position whatever right and they really want to do something else so in the con- conversation sooner or later na you know i wish i could be teaching i wish i could be doing something else mm. and classically i'm sure you've experienced it too this happens around 35 40 yeah people are calling it midlife crisis and i don't see it as a midlife crisis you've got into work when you're in your 20s because of so many compulsions right and initially you want to be competent you want to do this that and the other so you're actually working at that point of time for external reasons and you know that if you have to succeed your satisfaction is not as important as how satisfied your boss is with your work right so you're working for recognition not for meaning right once that threshold is crossed mm. one car and two houses or whatever it is then meaning starts becoming much more important than all this na then this doing being stuff starts surfacing mm. right and that is called uh you know midlife crisis it's really that this person knows exactly at 40 you know what you're capable of what you're not capable of at 40 you know the world pretty well mm. and you know yourself to some extent as well you know yourself quite you know, enough man you've done enough things you've failed you've succeeded yeah you know your competence so then you've also got a certain level of stability by that time right so then you start asking this question what should i do for the rest of my life mm. what will give me meaning for the rest of my life and if you find that there will be all this you know work life balance this being doing balance all that will happen if this coherence happens if this coherence doesn't happen it will always be a question mm. 